Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments on a daily basis in the Word of God. Thank you so much for being with me as we continue the theme we began earlier this week, and that is overcoming the fear of failure. We've looked at fear. That's what we looked at the first part of the week. And um, now we're looking at failure. There are all types of fears, but perhaps more none more daunting and challenging than the fear of failure. And we're unpacking it. We're looking at what the Bible has to say and teach us about failure. This is something I think it's important to remember about failure. And that is that failure is a tool that God uses to help us learn what doesn't work. You know, Thomas Edison, the great scientist who is attributed with inventing the, the light bulb and so many other marvels of modern day science. Thomas Edison uh, once said, because he a lot of experiments he had did not work. And he said um, that uh, I never say that uh, I failed when an experiment didn't work. Edison said, instead I say, I succeeded in finding out what doesn't work. And that's how you have to look at failure. Failure is succeeding in finding out what doesn't work. So failure, my brothers and sisters, is a tool that God uses to help us to become what God wants us to become. Look, if you will, at Psalm 119, verse 71. And notice what it says. It says, my troubles turn out all for my best. Take that word troubles out and put the word failure in there. And take the word mine, put your name in there. Let's read it now. It says, Kevin's failures turned out all for the best. They forced Kevin to learn. Now let's read it one more time. Insert your name where it says my, and insert the word failure where it says trouble. And let's read it. Kevin's failures turned out all for the best. They forced Kevin to learn. And it is a, is a, it is a result of failure that we learn so many lessons in life. It's not a tragedy to fail. It's a tragedy not to learn from the failure, to learn. And anything that can teach us, um, anything we can learn lessons from, is always beneficial for us. In the 1950s, uh, Ford um, Motor Company uh, developed, and they were so confident that they had in, developed the dream car. I mean, the promotions for this new car that they were going to, um, to, to manufacture, they were so confident that it was gonna be the car of the future. It would have the same effect of a Mercedes Benz. I mean, if you go back and read about this car, and the car I'm showing you on the screen is called the Etzel, the Etzel. Well, they were so confident that this car was gonna take off, and guess what? Now, don't forget to look at it very carefully, the Etzel. They were confident it was gonna take off. But there is no car in the history of car manufacturing that failed greater than the Etzel. That's why you've never heard of it, the Etzel. I mean, it was a dismal failure. In fact, there was always Etzel jokes. Uh, they made fun of the, the, the person who envisioned the Etzel. They made Ford, fun of Ford, Ford Motor Company in Detroit, the Etzel. It is what you're looking at in front of you is an example of a dismal failure. But you know what? As 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 remember, go go back to Psalm 119 again. Notice what it says. Psalm 119 says, uh, "My failures turned out for my best. They forced me to learn." And the failure of the Etzel helped Ford to learn what they needed to manufacture. So they took the best from the Etzel, the same technology from the Etzel that was a failure and manufactured another car that became Ford's 
best selling car. And the car that they produce from the failure of the Edsel is called the Ford Mustang. And the Ford Mustang, which was built off the Edsel, is their number one seller or their number one car, period. But it was the failure of the Edsel that produced that produced the Ford. Um, you have not heard of Doug Jones, but let me tell you who Doug Jones is. Doug Jones was in 1963, the number two heavyweight boxer in the world. The number one heavyweight boxer in 1963 was a fella by the name of Cassius Clay. We know him as Muhammad Ali. And Doug Jones and Cassius Clay had a fight to see who would go up against the heavyweight champion whose name was Sonny Liston. And up to this point, Muhammad Ali was undefeated. Like he was like 17, 16, 17, and oh, no defeats. Former a gold medal uh, Olympic winner of 1960. Well, Ali had a, 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 he always liked to uh, uh, predict the round in which he would defeat his opponent. But Doug Jones was one of the great counter punchers in boxing. In other words, you hit him, he would always counter and hit you back. He was a rough boxer. So of all of the fights that he fought, Muhammad Ali, the, fault, the fight that he almost lost which was a controversial win for Muhammad Ali, then Cassius Clay, was against Doug Jones from New York. And he barely won it, barely won it. So based on what he was predicting that he was gonna knock Doug Jones out, and if the fight went 10 rounds the distance, Muhammad Ali was a failure. And the critics were saying he can't take a punch and Sonny Liston will knock him out. It just so happened that Doug Jones had a style somewhat similar to Sonny Liston. And had it been Sonny Liston instead of Doug Jones, Muhammad Ali would have knocked out. And that's when Ali decided to change his strategy. In fighting the next fight against the heavyweight champion, Sonny Liston, he changed his strategy. And instead of going toe to toe with, uh, with Sonny Liston, he danced around the wing and he jabbed and jabbed and jabbed and then moved out of harm's way so that Sonny Liston could not hit him. He was elusive and evasive. And because of the failure of the Doug Jones fight, which was the fight prior to Sonny Liston, Ali learned some lessons that he took into the Sonny Liston fight that helped him defeat Sonny Liston and become the heavyweight champion of the world. Never forget that the great Muhammad Ali became great because he learned from his failure. And that's how we're supposed to handle failure. Instead of parking our emotions at our failure and saying, oh my God, I have failed. Look at failure as your pathway to grow. The freedom to fail is the freedom to grow. It is your, your poor performance with Doug Jones that gives you the, the lessons you need to learn in order to defeat your uh, Sonny List. Who would know that when they came to see this fight, they would see the total eclipse of, when they put up their money, that they would see the total eclipse of the Sonny. And he eclipsed the Sonny, but it was the failure that allowed him to do it. And it is the failure that allows us to do it. Now, knowing the story of Doug Jones and how, Ali failed, but the failure was helped him to defeat Sonny Liston. One more time, read Psalm 119 with me, verse 71, but put your name in it. My failures, Kevin's failures, turned out all for the best. They forced me to learn. They forced me to learn. My failure forced me to rethink some things. And as a result of your failure, God wants you to rethink some things. Now, one last thing. 
You can overcome any failure in life except one failure. There's one failure there's no comeback from. One failure you will never ever be able to come back from. I don't care what the failure is. You can come back by the grace of God from almost any devastating failure, but here's one failure you will never be able to rebound from. And it's in the word of God. And that's what we're that's why we have these powerful points to ponder because we're pondering what the word of God says about our lives. And here is a powerful point to ponder about failure, a failure you will never come back from. And it's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Be careful that no one fails to receive God's grace and begin. Stop. The one failure you can't come back from is failing to receive the grace and forgiveness of God, which is to say that when we fail and we and God wants to forgive us and we keep beating ourselves up because we won't accept the forgiveness and grace of God, you can't come back from that. If you tell yourself it's over for me and even God can't do anything with my messed up life, but if that's what you're telling yourself, no comeback for you. But if you're telling yourself that God still loves me and that God still has a plan and a purpose for my life, and what I was hoping was going to happen when I fought my Doug Jones didn't happen. But I learned some lessons from that fight. And I'm going to carry the lessons I learned from that fight into my fight with Sonny Liston. And I'll become the heavyweight champion of the world. In fact, if I had not learned the lesson, if he had not fought Doug Jones before he fought Sonny Liston, we wouldn't know anything about Muhammad Ali. God uses failure for our good and for his glory. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you that in spite of our failures, that we're never a failure until we give up. So don't let us give up. Let us go up. Let us learn lessons from our failure uh, that will help us to become champions. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much for being with me uh, for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. I emphasize this because it is God's will that Christians be connected to a church. And if you don't have a church, please consider becoming a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us, newstart at ssclive.org. Peace and blessings to you. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Uh, but until we gather tomorrow, don't forget our COVID protocol, and that is to stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.